To first determine how the Bermuda Ridge will build this summer, which will play a big role in terms of where exactly Choco Cyclones move in the Atlantic, we're going to need to take a look at the past sea pre um, level pressure anomaly over the Northern Atlantic. And as you can see for the, for the month of March 2023, we do see that the pressure was a lot lower than average right over the Northern Atlantic. And a big reason was because we were in a negative north atlantic oscillation and if this um and if the pressure is lower than average going on into the hurricane season that will make it more likely that the ridge over the bermuda ridge over the atlantic will be a lot weaker and as a result we'll see more like um we'll see storms more likely move out to sea rather than come close to the caribbean or the united states if we were to see the pressure remain this low going into the hurricane hurricane season but take a look at the several months before that we did see that the ridging was a built a little bit stronger than usual over the western atlantic for february and in january we did see the pressure a little bit stronger than usual as well for much of the northern atlantic of course contributing to a much warmer than average winter for the united states and then even into december the pressure was a little bit stronger so it's going to be very interesting to see how the pressure anomalies will look like by the time we approach the hurricane season but with the pressure this low over the atlantic along with the sea surface temperatures a little bit warmer than average in the, the same area where the bermuda ridge typically is located that could mean that the bermuda ridge will be weaker than normal so there's more likely of a chance that the tropical cyclones will move out to sea this hurricane season thanks to a weaker ridging um if we were to see the pressure a little bit lower than usual which i do expect um, um to continue as we approach the summer and the hurricane season Another thing that we need to keep in mind is the fact that we are in an El Nino pattern. So that means that the westerly winds in the upper levels will be a lot stronger. So I do suspect that more storms will move a little bit further eastward than usual and not necessarily move very far to the west. As during an El Nino, it's actually quite rare for a tropical cyclone to make it as far west as the western gulf of mexico so i do believe that thanks to the stronger westerly winds that are associated with an el nino that we're gonna see more storms um, um stay relegated just to the east of the eastern coast of the united states where maybe the the um where maybe the northeast or the southeast coast will get more involved rather than the gulf of mexico state so that's something something to keep in mind as well and i do believe that the stronger westerly winds will contribute to a potentially weaker ridge in the middle of the atlantic or potentially um or um which will allow tropical cyclones to potentially move a little bit further eastward this hurricane season thanks to the stronger westerly winds pretty much shifting a lot of troughs and ridges a little bit further eastward as well so that's something something to keep in mind this hurricane season So another big thing that we need to take a look at is the CFS model. So right now the CFS model is forecasting the um, that there's going to be a higher air pressure in the southern northern Atlantic. Um, that's going to be further from uh, that's going to be a stronger departure from average than the northern Atlantic, where we do see that the pressure in the northern Atlantic is closer to average than the pressure that's expected that's expected to exist um this hurricane season or during the early months uh during the um during the um the middle of the hurricane season the most active months august september and october and this could play a big role because if we're gonna see the ridging a little bit weaker than normal for much of the northern atlantic then we're more likely to see fish storms and storms move well out to sea before coming close to the united states of course there still could be those couple of tropical cyclones that do come uncomfortably close to the united states or the caribbean but there still will be plenty of troughs 
that will exist in the northern Atlantic that I believe will steer storms away from the from the United States and the uh, weaker Bermuda Ridge will contribute to that since the Bermuda Ridge is definitely very important when it comes to um, steering storms closer if not or further from the United States and I do believe that the Bermuda Ridge will be weaker than normal this hurricane season. So these are the three um, possible positions that the Bermuda Azores High could um, could um, could take this hurricane season. So the first position is when the Bermuda Azores High is a lot weaker. We see storms move out to sea a lot more frequently in this scenario, maybe impacting Bermuda, but still very far from impacting the United States or the Caribbean. And we have the second scenario, where, which is a little bit more concerning. The Bermuda Azores High is a little bit stronger in this scenario and does come a lot closer to the Caribbean as well as the United States. But but more frequently it moves out to sea maybe impacting North Carolina or portions of the southeast but by the time it reaches the latitude of the northeast more likely than not it would move to the northeast of that region and then we have the worst case scenario which would be scenario three where the Bermuda um, where the Bermuda Azores high is a lot stronger and we see much more storms move towards the Caribbean and into the Gulf of Mexico and this could impact the east coast as well in a scenario like scenario three this hurricane season I'm expecting the ridge to be a little bit weaker, so I'm leaning towards any, um, anything between um, anywhere between scenario two and scenario one this hurricane season, thanks to the fact that an, uh, an El Nino pattern is likely to influence where exactly this ridge builds. During an El Nino pattern, the westerly winds are a lot stronger, um, at least in the upper levels, so that will force the ridge to move a little bit further eastward um, during the hurricane season, which I believe will play a big role in terms of where exactly tropical cyclones will move, and that will mean that tropical cyclones will move a little bit further eastward this hurricane season. But again, take it with a grain of salt because a lot could change between now and the most active months of the hurricane season. Another thing I want to show you is the current sea surf temperature anomalies over the northern Atlantic at this time. And we do see that the sea surf temperatures are much above average just off the west African coast. And the warmer than average sea surf temperatures extend into the Caribbean, into the um, just off the coast of the northeast as well, and portions of the Gulf of Mexico. But we do see a pocket of cooler than average sea surf temperatures just I'll say just right in the middle of the northern portion of the Atlantic. So you're probably wondering how will this affect where exactly the Bermuda Ridge builds and how strong it'll build. Well, if the sea surf temperatures are above average in an area where the Bermuda Azores High typically builds at, then we're more likely to see a weaker Bermuda Azores High because since the sea surf temperatures are much warmer than average, that would promote more lift and that would definitely reduce the amount of sinking air the Bermuda Azores High is able to produce. So the so the ridge weakens and we see more of a scenario where tropical cyclones move out to sea rather than let's say um, move closer to the United States if the sea surf temperatures were closer to average for enough sinking air to exist for the Bermuda Azores high to be as potent so um, as of right now the Bermuda Azores high builds right around this area and we see that sea surf temperatures um, in this area are much cooler than average so we're more likely to see the Bermuda Azores high build somewhere around here so we could see it build a little bit further northward than usual this hurricane season if the sea surf temperatures remain this much colder than average in this area and I don't expect the Bermuda Azores high to move very far east at the same time because look at these sea surf temperatures just off the West African coast. Uh, there's going to be too much lift in this area for the Bermuda Azores High to build right over um, this area comfortably. So I do believe the the ridge will build a little bit more westward this hurricane season. But at the same time, the El Nino, as well as the fact that um, the air pressure been lower than average for much 
of the northeast over the past several months and we're more likely to see the bermuda azores highs um take more of a scenario too where it'll come close to the united states but maybe there could be those times where it's going to be 50 50 where tropical cyclones make landfall along the east coast but some tropical cyclones move out to sea so i do believe the bermuda azores high will say at around an average position maybe slightly a little bit maybe slightly eastward to the point where tropical cyclone landfall should be around average this hurricane season but they'll be more relegated towards the east coast rather than the gulf of mexico so here's my forecast on where exactly the Bermuda Azores High will build. I'm thinking that this um, this hurricane season, the Bermuda Azores High will build in a position where tropical cyclones, if they do make landfall, it'll most likely be along the east coast. But I do expect a fair share amount of storms to move out to sea this hurricane season because I don't expect the ridge to be as strong with a stronger El Nino and a strong and stronger westerly winds. However, at the same time, I don't expect the ridge to be necessarily very far east thanks to the much warmer than average temperatures we're seeing just off the West African coast, which will promote a little bit too much lift for the ridge to comfortably build a little bit eastward. So I'm expecting tropical cyclones to move sort of in this direction just off the east coast with some potentially coming close to the east coast and then a lot less tropical cyclones moving towards the caribbean as well as the gulf of mexico so let me keep that in mind this hurricane season but remember whether you're expected to receive um tropical cyclones um tropical cyclone landfalls um more or less than average remember all it takes is one trop powerful tropical cyclone to change the lives of thousands and potentially millions and completely devastate a community so don't underestimate a hurricane season just because you might not you have a lower risk of a tropical cyclone landfall because remember all it takes is just one tropical cyclone so keep that in mind this hurricane season but anyways guys i thank you guys for watching and make sure to, to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content